Adhan Academy is dedicated to bringing interesting lectures with solved example questions on a variety of subjects with critical concepts. For topic-based worksheets with detailed solutions, go to our website adhan.com. If you enjoy our videos, please like, share, and subscribe. In this video, we are going to be discussing question two of year 2012, variant 4.3. October November. In this question, they mentioned that a small frictionless trolley is attached to a fixed point A by means of a spring. A second spring is used to attach the trolley to a variable frequency oscillator. Okay, both springs remain extended within the limit of proportionality. Okay, um, initially the oscillators are switched off meaning that the trolley is not moving when t equals to zero. The trolley is displaced horizontally along the line joining the two springs and is then released, meaning we can say that the spring is first pulled towards this side at first and then it is released. So the object starts at a point of maximum displacement from the equilibrium. Let's say that this is the equilibrium point or the midpoint of its traveling and it is extended to here and then what will happen is the object will move back towards the equilibrium meaning this point is the middle equilibrium and then again it will move towards this direction here and finally it will proceed to return back to this point. Now, at this point, t is equal to 0 seconds, where it is at maximum displacement. Then, the object starts to move back here. We can say it's this point. Here, t is equal to a certain value, let's say x seconds. At this point, what will happen is the velocity of the trolley will be maximum. And then as the trolley starts moving towards the opposite direction, in towards this direction, velocity will decrease. Here, the velocity will be equals to zero meters per second and then again it will rebound move back towards this direction back to equilibrium which is here where again you will see its velocity will be maximum then once it has reached the equilibrium here it will again move back to the original position from which it was released. See, it will go back towards this direction, back to this point. And this is when its velocity will be equals to zero again. Now let me explain how the trolley moves with respect to a velocity time graph. At t equals to zero, the trolley is extended to one side, and therefore, when it is released, it moves such that its velocity increases and becomes maximum when it returns to equilibrium. This position, when it returns to equilibrium, then velocity starts to decrease again as it reaches the maximum point in the opposite direction which is this point and then again it moves back in the opposite direction in this direction it moves back in this direction therefore we can say since in this direction we took that velocity velocity to be positive 
we can say movement in this direction is negative. Therefore, then it reaches maximum velocity as it reapproaches equilibrium point, and then it continues to move towards this direction to return to zero velocity. Now that we've understood what the graph represents, let's continue with the question. In part A1, we've been asked that using figure 2.2, state two different times at which the displacement of the trolley is zero, and then the acceleration in one direction is maximum. Okay, now let's return to the graph. Now, how do we determine when and where displacement of the trolley is zero? From a velocity time graph, we know that displacement is calculated as area underneath the graph. However, it's, we can't find the displacement uh, using area underneath the graph. We need to use something else. We need to use the concept of acceleration. And the main definition of periodic motion. In periodic motion, we know that the magnitude of acceleration is directly proportional to the magnitude of displacement, even though they are in completely opposite directions. So, for times when displacement of the trolley is zero, we can find out points where acceleration is zero. Now, acceleration is the gradient of velocity time graph. So, we need to find out the times at which acceleration is zero using gradient of the velocity time graph. So the gradient of the velocity time graph is zero at point P equals to 0 0.1 seconds and 0 0.3 seconds, 0 0.5 seconds, 0 0.7 seconds. We can use any of these values as our answer. So let's go ahead and write it down. Displacement of the trolley is zero at time zero point one and zero point three seconds. You can also write zero point five and zero point seven up to you. So now in the second part they ask us when find out the different times at which acceleration in one direction is maximum. So for maximum acceleration, we need to find maximum gradient. So when is acceleration maximum? Well, acceleration is maximum, meaning the gradient is maximum, time t equals to 0 0.4. See, I've drawn out the graph, for the linear graph for the gradient at times 0 0.4 and 0 0.8. See, at these points, at time t equals to 0 0.4 seconds and 0 0.8 seconds, we can see that acceleration is maximum. Now you might ask, why didn't we use the gradient for time at 0 0.2 seconds and 0 0.6 seconds? Well, here the accelerations are negative values. Let's just write it down. Acceleration in one direction is maximum at time 0 0.4 and 0 0.8. The second part of A, we've been asked to find the frequency of the oscillation of the trolley. Frequency. We know that frequency is equals to 1 by period. So let's find the period of this oscillation. The period of this oscillation is 0 0.4 seconds. Okay. So write that down. That t equals to 0 0.4 seconds. So frequency is 1 by 0 0.4 will give us 2.5 hertz. Part 3 says, the variation with time of displacement of a trolley is sinusoidal. The variation of time of the velocity of a trolley is also sinusoidal. State the phase difference between the displacement and velocity. Well, the phase difference between velocity and displacement is always 90 degrees. We can also write phi by radians. 
Now for part B. The oscillator is now switched on. The amplitude of vibration of the oscillator is constant. The frequency F of the vibration of the oscillator is varied. Okay. The trolley is forced to oscillate by means of vibration of the oscillator. The variation of F of the amplitude A0 of the oscillations of the trolley is shown in figure 2.3. Okay. By reference to your answer in A, state the approximate frequency at which amplitude is maximum. In A, we saw that the trolley was moving with maximum amplitude and its frequency was calculated to be 2.5. So the answer here will also be 2.5. Moving on. C. The amplitude of the oscillations in B may be reduced without changing significantly the frequency at which the amplitude is maximum. State how this may be done and give a reason for your answer. We know that damping can cause the frequency, the natural frequency of oscillation to decrease and at the same time it can also cause amplitude to decrease. So for our answer we can write well how can we dampen the movement? We can increase the mass of the trolley by let's say uh, placing a small sheet of paper to the trolley. We can use any any object. Another thing that we can do is for the damping, we can another thing we can do is instead of damping, we can reduce the oscillators amplitude so that the amplitude of the trolley itself decreases by reducing power input into the system so these are two ways we can do this